Uh, first off, Cade, thanks for joining us today. Uh, go, go for it, uh, Jacob. Yeah, uh, Cade, it's Jacob Unruh with the Oklahoma. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been a long time coming, right? It's, uh, it's uh, good to speak with you in person. Tell me, kind of walk us through this process um, after the NCAA inf infractions come down, kind of your process of how you came to decide to, to stick with your commitment to, to Oklahoma State. Well, at first, at first it's tough because when, you know, when they first make the ruling, all emotions are running super high. So, you know, you want to explore all your options and everything. But after kind of settling down and, and really looking into everything, um, at the end of the day, Coach Boyden is who I wanted to play for. Um, it would have been tough for me to, you know, go overseas and go play for a foreign coach or, you know, even a G League or anything. You know, I just hadn't built a connection with anybody like that. So. Coach Boyden already had a great relationship with, and that's what I wanted to play for. How much did Isaac Likely or anyone like that on the team influence your decision or your relationship with the recruiting class? Well, I mean, the whole team, there's a lot of dudes that are from my area anyway. So, you know, like I said, Isaac's from my area. He's also from Arlington. Um, Rondell Walker, I'd already played with AAU with. Chris Harris, Avery, Montreal. You know, there's a lot of guys from Dallas-Fort Worth area. So. Um, you know, being around those guys, I was already used to. And, you know, I wanted to spend the year around people that I'm comfortable with and family. You also were training with Moncrief. What was it like training with, with him down there? Yeah, so he came from, from Canada to um, work out with me for like a month. He moved in with my cousin Ashton. Um, and, you know, it was really good to, you know, just build a relationship with him and kind of get familiar with his game and, and who he is as a person. So I think it's made it a lot easier transitioning into, you know, starting to get to work out with them and everything like that. Thanks, Kate. No problem. Let's go. Uh, next question from uh, Jenny. Go for it. Hey, Kay. Jenny Carlson. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm good. Hey, you mentioned wanting to play for Coach Boynton, and he's said to us in the last few weeks that there's probably nobody outside your family you've talked to more in the last four years. So you've gotten to know him beyond basketball. Tell, tell us a little bit about what you've gotten to know about Mike Boynton and, and just what that relationship has become over the years. I think the biggest thing about him is he's more about, you know, loyalty and, and the people that are around him, people that, you know, are good to him. He's good too. Um, and overall, he's just a super genuine dude. You know, he's had a lot of adversity since he's been a head coach at, at Oklahoma State, but he never feels bad for himself. He never makes excuses. He just kind of keeps going. So, you know, having that as the leader of the program, I feel like, you know, that that's somebody that I can learn from a whole lot. And down the road, I feel like that's somebody I can have a, a great relationship with, you know, 20 years down the line. The, the day that the sanctions were announced, he uh, was on a, a call with reporters and said that he had made some somewhat frantic phone calls to all of you, to the, all the players, to try to share the news. Can you talk a little bit about what was that call like? What stands out to you from, from that call? And then subsequent calls with him over maybe the next day or two. Yeah, I think the craziest thing about the call was the way he approached it to me. Um, I don't think there's any other coach. I mean, I might be wrong. I can't tell nobody. Nobody else has been in that situation, but there's not a lot of coaches that I can think of that would, you know, tell tell a recruit, do what you want to do. I'm gonna help you if you want to leave. I'm gonna help you. You know what I'm saying? There's, you're not gonna hear that from anybody else. And you know, I feel like that meant a whole lot to me because I knew that he really cared about me as a person instead of just the player that I am. So uh, it was definitely a crazy day. Um, my phone was blowing up and everything, but. No, hearing that from him meant a whole lot to me. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Um, next question coming from Marshall Scott. Go for it, Marshall. Hey, Cade. Uh, Marshall, good to, good to meet you. Um, what's kind of been you – you've been around the guys for about a week now. What's kind of been your, your early sense on the team? You know, not basketball-wise, you guys haven't dived too far into that yet, but just the early sense on the team, how you guys are getting along and stuff like that. Uh, I think we have a good togetherness already. Um, maybe just because we're all from the same area and we've already got to know each other um, previously before we got here. But you know, I feel like our, our personalities really mesh well together. Um, and, you know, nobody nobody's 
has like too big of an ego or anything. And I think that's a big thing going into the season because, you know, we have a lot of good pieces and everything. So, you know, having guys be ready to buy in and, you know, just re willing to come in and work, I feel like that means a lot. One one guy in particular I'm kind of interested in is Montreal. He's not very big on social media. It was kind of a, a lower ranked recruit. Just you played with him obviously last summer. What 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 can you tell me about about Montreal? No, Montreal is one of my one of my greatest friends in life. Um, he went to Arlington Martin, which was you know the rival of my high school, and we played the last three AAU seasons together. So, um, you know that's one of my 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 closest buddies. Uh, he he came and worked out with me a bunch of time over the summer. So he's I mean he's he's not really into social media. He's not he's a super under the radar guy, but. I mean, he's a special, special, special athlete. Um, and you know, I think he brings a whole lot to the table that uh, being so underrated, I feel like that'll help us a lot. Thank you. No problem. Uh, next up, uh, let's go with Frank Bonner from Tulsa World. Hey, Kay, good to finally meet, talk with you. Um, looking back at your initial decision to commit to OSU, what were some of the biggest factors that played into your, your initial decision? I think, you know, it was – my recruitment was such a such a weird one just because there, it was like a big old roller coaster, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. But I think the biggest thing was, you know, the, the sense of family with the team. I feel like Coach Boyden, out of all my visits, you know, all, all five of the schools that I visited were, were great programs and have a lot of great things going. But, you know, the thing that was different for me was Coach Boyden is so family-oriented. Um, you know, the team, when they were on my visit, we all went to his house, and the team knew every in and out, every inch of the house. Like, they've been there a thousand times. And you can tell on your visits, you can tell when when a team is uncomfortable. Like, we don't ever do this. on our Like, why are we spending, you know, why are we making this time so special for this recruit? You can tell. And, you know, the team was acting like, uh, this is what we do, and I guess Kate is here this time. So, you know, I feel like that meant a whole lot to me. And, and, you know, it was just the little stuff that was super important to me. And then it's not too far from my house. So I live in Big 12 country, so my family can come watch a whole lot again. And what were all the, the five schools, including OSU, that you had visited? I visited OSU, Kentucky, North Carolina, Washington, and Florida. And what was your initial – introduction to Boynton. Obviously, you guys have a, a pretty strong relationship. When did that relationship start? It started my, my freshman year in the practice before any games. I hadn't played any high school games yet. Um, and we were in our, our preseason workouts, which is really just conditioning and stuff. But we played a little bit of pickup ball. And I had a teammate, Kyle Edwards. He's at Texas Tech right now. And he was the one that was getting all the recruitment. So, you know, I didn't come in thinking to even be recruited. I was just, I feel like I was just a freshman. So he came in and um, he watched me a couple times and he he walked up to me and just offered me. He was like, I want to, you know, extend you a scholarship to University of Oklahoma State or Oklahoma State University. And I was like, like, what? And so he told me later on that Brad Underwood didn't even know that he was offering me. So <laughs> later on, and, and now looking back, when I talked to Coach Underwood afterwards, Coach Underwood was even kind of like, well, I guess Coach Boyden really likes you. Uh, I guess we're going to recruit you. It's just a crazy story. But Coach Boyden, he believed in me so much early on, and I'm super thankful for that. Appreciate it, Kate. Yeah, no problem. Uh, next question from uh, Nathan Thompson. Go for it. Hey, Kate. Obviously, with the NCAA uh, punishment, the big thing is the postseason ban. Whether it's winning an appeal or, or going through the courts, how confident are you that, that you'll actually get to play in the postseason if you guys qualify, and how important is that to you? Uh, I think it's super important, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to get my hopes up. Um, I still feel like there's so much that, you know, we can accomplish as a team to impact the program for the future that I feel like that would mean a whole lot to us anyway. So, you know, playing in the postseason, you know, I feel like that's a – it's always been a dream of mine, but – you know, I, I'm really just excited to get to work with the team and see, you know, if we can win a Big 12 conference tournament or a conference championship. Or, you know, just get as much success as we can. You know, I feel like there's still a lot of goals that we can accomplish. So you just go into this season thinking 
you're not going to get a chance to play in the postseason. And if it happens that you are able to, that's kind of like extra. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get my hopes up, but if they do allow us to be in there, I think we will definitely be ready for it. Um, you know, we're going to prepare the whole season like we're going to play in the final four. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. We're not going to get our hopes up too much, but you know, we want to be the best team that we can be. And you talked a little bit about kind of your decision-making process and sticking with OSU. How close would you say you were to maybe changing your mind and going somewhere else after the sanctions came down? I mean, at first, emotions were high, but I didn't really have, you know, a destination in my mind. Um, but, you know, after maybe a day, I knew I knew who I wanted to play for. I figured, I figured you know, Coach Boyden is a, such a great basketball mind. Our whole staff is full of, you know, good basketball minds. And I feel like that's the biggest thing that'll help me as a player is, you know, surrounding myself around people that really know the game. So, you know, I feel like there was still so much I could still accomplish and all of my goals were still intact at staying at Oklahoma State. So, I mean, I, I announced that I was going to come back later just because I let the media do their thing. And, you know, I just, it didn't really matter too much to me. So I was just kind of chilling away from my phone, but I knew where I was going. I guess the other question besides the sanctions is is in the middle of a pandemic here. Are you confident you guys will get to play a season? You know, that's the goal. Um, it's it's tough to say right now. There's a lot of unknowns, but, you know, we're going to prepare like like there's going to be a season and, and, you know, work as hard as we can in this off season to get ready for it. So that when – if they do say that there is a season, we're prepared and we're going to win games. Um, and if not, then, you know, we're still going to train to be the best players that we can be until we do get to play basketball again. So that's the biggest thing. Just keep working hard and, you know, see where we can get. All right, thank you. No problem. And for our next question, uh, Cliff Blunt with the Associated Press. Hey, Kate, what's going on? How you doing? I'm good. So I got a two-part question. One is, how much of a factor in you staying is the fact that your brother is on the staff? And then the second thing is, how do you feel about the fact that you're going to be playing in a way for him and working with him? Uh, you know, my brother has, has been one of my best friends in life. Um, he's been my like biggest life coach besides my parents. So, you know, being around him for another year is, was super important to me, but, you know, I feel like him being there was just the cherry on top, but I feel like, you know, the whole program as a whole was, was the foundation and everything else in between, which, you know, that's what won me over. And then having my brother being here, it, it made it almost a no-brainer for me. So, you know, having Cannon here, it means a whole lot. Um, him and my cousin Ashton are two of the biggest reasons why I am the player that I am today. So, you know, being able to work a full season with them, I feel like will help my game tremendously. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And the next question, let's go to Mark Cooper. Hey, Cade. Hope you're uh, hope you're doing well and healthy. Um, I'm I'm curious. You you obviously visited a number of schools with with a lot of tradition and, and recent success, and uh, you've mentioned family a, a number of times. Uh, why why was why was the family atmosphere at Oklahoma State uh, so important that you know whatever a Kentucky or a North Carolina could offer in terms of what they've done on the court recently wasn't enough to sway you? You know, I think I think. Something that doesn't really go notice in, in recruitment is, you know, I kind of experienced this being out at Montverde for two years and not having any family around or, you know, I got to really build and get close with my team and my coaches. But I think being comfortable is so important with how you play on the court as well as going to practices. I feel like, you know, being at Oklahoma State, I was going to be more comfortable here than at any of the other schools that, you know, I was considering. Um, all of those schools are great programs, and I feel like I could could have been successful in all those schools. But you know, being comfortable and and wanting to go to to practice at five a.m. with these guys, and you know, wanting to being able to run suicides with guys that I've known for a long time, and I know are gonna have my back. I feel like all that stuff really makes a difference. And you know, having teammates like this, and having you know such a staff like the one I have now, I feel like all that played a big role into it. And you know, I'm happy with my decision. And then a, a number of your peers are, are entering the kind of the newly created G League team. Uh, you know, what, what conversations did you have with the officials in the G League? What, what did they kind of present to you? And 
uh, what, what were your thoughts on that whole program and, and how, how did you decide not to go that route? Well, I kind of, I kind of stayed out of it. Um, I kind of, my family kind of took care of that. Um, but my family always been super transparent with, you know, everything that's being offered to me. Um, and you know, what, what I'm getting myself into, you know, what, what they're being told, they let me know. So, you know, they, they did reach out. Um, they did offer me whatever, but at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, being in college, I feel like that would help me, you know, big 12 is a big platform. There's a lot of games on ESPN. Um, and you know, being able to to showcase the player that I am and my talents, I feel like that was really big for me because you know I want the average average basketball fan to to know who Kay Cunningham is instead of you know the the analysts that know basketball and that's what they do is watch every day. So uh, I feel like that was a, a really big thing for me and you know just just working and you know trying to be the best player I can be in the college atmosphere where I can have a college weight room and everything like that. I feel like that was big for me. Just to, to clarify, did, did they reach back out to you at all after uh, the, the sanctions were announced a few weeks ago or, or no? Yeah, I mean, every, everybody kind of reached out after that. Uh, everybody tried to, you know, make one more jab at it, but we kind of just kept that at a distance and, and you know, just kind of stayed ton of vision and stayed focused on what we were trying to do. Thanks, Kate. No problem. Appreciate you. Uh, and next question, Ryan Aminsky with the Ocali. Uh, hi, Cade. Uh, this time last year, you and Isaac likely were playing in the uh, FIBA Under-19 tournament over there, overseas. Um, how much did that impact your recruiting decision, and, and what was that experience like for you? You know, playing with Ice, you know, was a really big thing for me because I got to see how he was not only on the court and in the locker room, but, you know, off the court um, a little bit better than I had previously just being in the same city together. Um, and, you know, I, f I really fell in love with the fact that he, he's a he's a guy that's going to do whatever it takes to win. Um, he doesn't have a high ego at all. He just, you know, he's going to do whatever it takes. So being the defender that he is, the hustle guy that he is, along with being, you know, such a great playmaker, I feel like me and him will be able to play off of each other really well. Thank you. No problem. Appreciate you. I think you're used to oh, am I? Can you guys hear me now? There we go. There we go. Uh, Danielle, were you? Did you have a question? Yes, I did. Uh, hi, Kate. Danielle Dwyer here. Um, kind of piggybacking off the last question. A year ago, you and Isaac were winning the gold with the USA uh, in that tournament. How would you describe just kind of what this last year has been like for you since winning that? Um, is there anything you feel like specifically in your game that you have grown and then what it's like now to think a year later you're reuniting with Isaac and Stillwater now? You know, I, first off, I never thought that I would ever win a, a gold medal, you know, just growing up. So being able to do that was, I wouldn't even call it a dream come true because I didn't even really get to dream of that. I didn't think that that was attainable, but um you know, being able to do that, and then now that's my my teammate that that I've already played with, I've already built a relationship with. Um, I feel like I've grown as a player a whole lot. Um, just just steadily improving, you know, each of my skills. But I also think that Ice has, has grown a whole lot. So I feel like you know both of us are coming back in and being players that you know are a lot better than the last time we played together. But we still have the same you know egos that we want to do whatever it takes to win. So I feel like, you know, playing this year is going to be super fun for me. Um, and, you know, he's already been in the Big 12 a couple of years. So being able to pick his brain on what to expect and everything, I feel like that helped me a whole lot. And just a quick follow-up. We saw so many of um, the players taking to social media about kind of almost a recommitment of their decision to stay with Coach Boynton and stay with the program. How much do you think just going through something – of this magnitude, um, the possibility of that postseason ban, all those sanctions that the NCA like handed down to you guys. How much do you think that kind of brings you even closer together as a unit? How much do you think that might actually help you guys grow um, as a team and play stronger this year? I think I think it's gonna bring us together a whole lot because you know we had the ruling to to not play in the postseason, but 
NCAA also gave us the, the opportunity to go to another school and be, you know, eligible immediately. And for everybody to, to pass that up and still come back and choose to come back, you know, it says a lot about the players, but I almost feel like it says a whole lot more about the coaching staff and, you know, how they, what they preach to the team. You know, there's a lot of returners that chose to come back, which, you know, if you if you don't like a coach too much, you're not going to come back if you, if you have the opportunity to go be eligible somewhere else. So, you know, I had never played for Coach Bowling before, but to see, you know, all the returning guys want to come back and play for him again, you know, I feel like that says so much more about Coach Boyden than anything. And sorry, lastly, uh, with regards to your brother, you talked about just how much of an influence he's played on your life so far and how much more you think he could help you uh, now within this uh, program. What specifically, is there anything that has been a huge key to you so far in your growth that you've gotten mainly from him, just growing up with him and, and playing ball with him? I think the biggest thing is, you know, knocking out outside noise, but also just staying patient with everything. Um, you know, now I'm in a position that, you know, a lot of things can can kind of go at my speed, especially on the court. Um, but off the court, I don't have to get rushed by, you know, people people giving me these these fake opportunities or, you know, everything that, you know, all the fake love. I feel like he's just, you know, really helped me handle all the, the new responsibilities of being the player that I am. Um, and, you know, I feel like without him, you know, who knows how I'd be taking all this and if I'd be the man that I am right now. So, you know, I'm just super thankful for that. And that's just all the off the court stuff. On the court, he's, you know, he knows what he's doing. So <laughs> I, I, it's hard to explain. He's just a genius on that. So, you know, I'm just excited to be able to have more time with him. And now he lives five minutes from me. So, again, so, you know, it's easy. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Uh, next question, Garen Emig, you are up. Hey, thanks so much for uh, making time for us, first of all. Yeah, really no appreciate this. Uh, do you have uh, a favorite NBA player or, or role model from the league? It's tough. I switch a whole lot. I switch a whole lot. LeBron has been probably my biggest influence just throughout my childhood just because he's been, you know, the best since I've been around and watching basketball. But right now I watch a whole lot of Luka Doncic just because I'm a huge I, – I grew up I grew up in Dallas, so Dirk was my guy, and now Luka's the new Dallas Mavs guy. So Luka um, – and we have pretty similar body types, so probably Luka right now. Are you uh, – are you, do you have a game that, that – you, I know you're not at Luka's stage, obviously. You've got, a, you've, got a, you've got a few years to grow into that, but are there any similarities to how, how you see the game or play the game that, that you like to attach to either one of those guys? I think they're, they're both really big-time playmakers. Um, and, you know, like you said, those, are, those guys are on such a high level that, you know, that's, that's the level that I, I dream of being on. That's the level that I'm working for. But, you know, just watching them, you know, the way that they see the game and make defenses almost do what they want them to do. You know, they manipulate defenses so well. And, you know, I watch a lot of film on both of those guys, so I try to take as much as I can. So, you know, I feel like copying, copying always works in basketball. So I'm going to do that as much as I can. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. For sure. And next question, Dan Hawk, you are up. All right. Hopefully you can hear me, Cade. Uh, in the landscape of everything that's been going on with HBCUs, I know that you already had the commitment to go to OSU, but do you see that being a potential for uh, future top talent to forego going to Power Five and going to HBCUs? And was it even – any possibility, even a discussion with anything for you? I, I, you know, I'd really love to see it grow. Um, you know, I think McCord Maker going there is a really big first step for it. Um, it was a really bold move, and I'm super happy for him. I feel like it was a great move for him just because it brings more awareness to it. But, you know, I was never recruited by any HBCU, so, you know, I've, I only liked HBCUs because all my childhood friends – parents went to them and, you know, they're going to them now. So I've always been a fan of HBCUs. Grambling versus Prairie View game has always been such a big event that everybody wants to go to. But, you know, I definitely advise all all my, my little bros that are coming up right now, you know, go to HBCUs in Oklahoma State. All right. Uh, next question, uh, Caden McFarland. 
Kate, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Um, it, it. Maybe it's too soon to say, but since you do have familiarity with with several of the guys on the team, how, how do you see kind of your role and, and what you may be asked to do and how you fit in on with this squad? No, I think I fit in just fine. Um, you know, the team knows what I do well, um, and I think they're going to let me be me. And I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I, I, I don't feel like I'm being limited by any – older guys saying, you know, you have to wait your turn for this or anything. You know, they're going to let me be the guy that I am because I don't feel like I'm a selfish player. I feel like, you know, I make the right basketball play. And I feel like, you know, they want to they want to have that on their team. I feel like they want to be on the receiving end of that. So I think us using each other, I feel like that's the attitude right now. And I feel like that'll carry on through the season. And, you know, Oklahoma State obviously has a, a really great history, but they don't have a history of having guys who would be the number one player in the country come in. So there is a different anticipation and excitement and I'm sure expectation level. It, you get a kick out of that. I, I would assume the fact that you chose Oklahoma State means uh, you welcome that challenge. Definitely, definitely. You know, I, I really like the University of Oklahoma State. I love it. Um, and, you know, I feel like, you know, this is the opportunity to, you know, get that history rolling and, and start a new trend of, you know, you can be a top guy and go to Oklahoma State and succeed. Um, you know, I feel like Oklahoma State was the perfect fit for me because of the Big 12, the coaching staff, the location. You know, I feel like there were a lot of different factors that played in, but, you know, I don't really feel any pressure of playing basketball because that's a game that I've done since I was a little kid. So. No, there's no pressure in playing basketball. I, I, this, it's a game at the end of the day, and I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good at it. Thank you. No problem. Uh, next question, Ryan Novinsky, you are up again. Hi, Kate. Yeah, so whether it's you as, you know, obviously the number one recruit um, or just an average student, a lot of freshmen this coming fall are going to face a, you know, unordinary freshman year. So. What are your thoughts on your upcoming academic freshman year and, and all the social distancing and masks that are going to be taking place on campus? Right now, I'm just kind of going with the flow. Um, there's, not, there's not a lot of knowing in what we're going to be doing and how the school year is going to look. So right now, it's just more about, you know, getting ready for the season. And once August comes around and everybody starts moving in, you know, we're all wearing our masks and everything. We're kind of distancing ourselves from everybody. So... We're trying to, you know, I'm really happy that Oklahoma State is, you know, and our coaches and everybody, we've been handling it really well, and they're keeping us super safe with it. But, you know, I, who knows? It's, it's hard to tell right now. We're just going to go with the flow, and I'm going to try to get good grades and score a lot of points. So, we'll see. Thank you. And next question, uh, Jacob Unra, you are up. Uh, I've already heard kind of some – rumblings of these pickup games you guys are already playing. Um, what are those like? What What's standing out to you during those? Well, I mean, right now we haven't really got to be on the court too much together. Um, you know, I don't know how, how those those rumors and stuff got out, but, no, we haven't really got to – I wish we'd be able to play a little bit more together on the court. Um, but, you know, right now we're just kind of getting to know each other, you know, outside the court right now. Um, in the dorms and, you know, just spend the time together. And, you know, I feel like, I feel like when we get on the court, I feel like it's going to be a good togetherness just off of what we already started building. I, uh, I have to ask you, you mentioned LeBron earlier. I, we asked Ice this last season, I think, but LeBron or Michael Jordan? <laughs> oh, you put me on the spot with that one. Um, now I'm, I'm, I'm growing up in the LeBron era, so. I have to say LeBron just because out of respect. You know what I'm saying? I have to say LeBron. But I definitely – I'm not going to argue with anybody that says Michael Jordan at all. Uh, that's, that's Michael Jordan. I can't argue with that. So, you know, I did watch the documentary, and, you know, it did wake me up on a lot of things. But, you know, I did watch a lot of Michael Jordan highlights and stuff, but I grew up with LeBron, so I'm picking LeBron. That's fair. I, I grew up with Michael Jordan, so – yeah, so if you no. – I feel like you should be picking Michael Jordan in that case. Exactly. Okay. Well, I, I feel like uh, I got a good answer out of that. I appreciate it, Case. Yeah, no problem. And Frank Bonner, you are up. Go for it. Hey, Kate, uh, a while ago, um, after you guys had, had signed, Boyden talked about 
the opportunity to have some really good competitive practices. Looking at, you know, your individual game, how important is it to know that you have guys on the roster like Ice and Avery who are pretty good defensive players and you'll be going against that, you know, day in and day out? You know, I think it's super important because having good defenders, you know, that's going to make you a better offensive player. Um, and, you know, I, Ice is going to push you. Ice, I've already played with Ice. Um, he's gonna, he's not going to give you anything easy. So having a full year of practicing with that, you know, I feel like that'll, that'll be a bigger challenge than most games. And I think that'll make, you know, a lot of games a lot easier because he is one of the better perimeter defenders in the country, I believe. So, you know, I'm going to defend as well. So I'm going to make it harder on them. They're going to have a trouble scoring on me also. But, you know, just having that competitiveness, I feel like that'll, that'll really translate into games. And it'll also, you know, bring that energy to the rest of the team, you know, when we play. So I feel like that'll be big for us. I'm sure you're looking forward to, to getting getting in some of those 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 good rivalry battles with your teammates. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it'll be a lot of fun. I'm already knowing it will. I right, appreciate it. Yeah. And Jason Elmquist, Stillwater News Press. Go for it. Jason, you there? Can you hear us? Can you hear me now? There we go. Thanks for joining us. Uh, about a month ago, you, you tweeted out Black Lives Matter. We've, we've seen uh, Chuba Hubbard making, you know, utilizing his platform here at Oklahoma State. How important is it, do you feel, for yourself and, and obviously a guy like Chuba to, to utilize your platform in your call for, uh, for racial justice? I think it's huge. Um, you know, the reason for me tweeting it out, um, I knew that I had, I knew that was the perfect time to do it because it's something that I really believed in, but you know, the, the NCAA sanctions had just came down and I knew everybody was looking at my page ready for anything. So, you know, I feel like that was the biggest time, the best time for me to, you know, let, let my, my views on things be known. And, you know, I feel like, I feel like it was a good move for me, but, you know, I'm super happy with how, you know, Tuba Hubbard has been handling his situation um, and how the football program is doing their thing right now. So, I think everything's going in the right direction at Oklahoma State for sure. Obviously, Coach Boynton has has been vocal in this as well. How how much has he allowed you guys to to utilize your platform? You know, Coach Boynton is super transparent. Um, he wants us to to speak our minds and and you know and showcase what our what our viewpoints are. But he also does not hide the fact that you know there are consequences behind if you say the wrong thing. There will be negative feedback. So. You know, just be smart with your words and, and be educated on what you're speaking on. So, you know, hearing that from him as the leader of our program, I think that's big because it doesn't make us shy away from who we are or anything. And, you know, we get to be who we, you know, want to be and, and lead with our platform. So, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. Thanks. Yeah. Might have time for one more question if anybody has one. Um, if not, uh, oh, yes, we do. Is that Kyle Boone? Go for it, Kyle. Hello, hello. Yep. Hey, thanks for your time today, Cade. Hey, Peggy, backing off of what Caden asked earlier, I'm curious, uh, do you feel like going to OSU will start a new trend for OSU's luck with other top recruits in the future or that you're maybe setting a new trend for Oklahoma State? Uh, it's kind of rare that OSU lands five-star recruits, much less kind of recruits with one-and-done type of potential. So you're kind of charting a little bit of new territory and still are. I'm curious what you think about that. You know, I want to be I want to be the 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 guinea pig for it, and I don't really think I'm I'm I don't think guinea pig is the right word for it because I don't feel like I'm testing anything out. I really feel confident in the fact that Coach Boyden can get me where I want to be, um, and the rest of our staff can do that. So. You know, I really just, it's really just for me to show, you know, everybody else coming up that it's possible wherever, wherever you want to go, you know, if you're good enough to be that pick that you want to be, then you can do that. Um, you know, the NBA scouts are not, they're, they're going to find you if you're that good. So, you know, I feel like Coach Boyden is who I want to play for. That's who I feel like can, can get me to that platform and to that level. Um, and I think after that, I think a lot more people want to, you know, follow behind and use that same route. Thank you.
Yeah. All right, anybody else? Frank, one more? You got it. Go for it, Frank. Sorry, just, yeah, just one more. Just to go on, uh, have you had, um, I know it's early, but have you had any conversations uh, involving the, 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 the one and done in, in your plans? Well, I mean, that's always been a goal of mine. Um, you know, the NBA is, is the, the end goal for me. Um, you know, hopefully it's in one year, but, you know, if it's not, I'm, I've, I'm comfortable with the people that I'm around. I'm comfortable that, you know, I, if I stay here four years, I would be just as happy as I am, you know, going into this year. So, you know, I'm not I'm not really worried about it. You know, I feel like whenever it's time for me to get into the NBA, I want to be able to last. So if it means I have to play here three years, then that's what it takes. So, you know, I'm more about staying in the NBA. So however long it takes. Um, and, yeah, if it's one year, then it's one year. And, you know, I'm going to try to make the most out of the year that I'm here. Appreciate it. Danielle, do you have one more question? Go for it. This is just for fun. Um, Eskimo Joe's is such a staple for Stillwater, and I'm sure the cheese fries don't really, you know, fall into the category of what you should be eating every day. But have you had a chance to have any Eskimo Joe's yet? It's crazy. Me and me and Chris Harris, we we drove over there um, and we walked in, but they said it was packed. It was super packed when I got there. And uh, they said it was like a 25 minute wait, so we were like, uh, "But I will, I will get in there. That's a promise. I will get in there and, and see what all the hype is about." All right. Well, when you do, we expect like a full recap on your thoughts at some point. Yeah, for sure. For sure, I'll give it a review. I'll give it a review. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Thompson, do you have one more question? Go for it. All right. Yeah, Kate. Just real quick, you're talking about the goal of being one and done. If a season doesn't happen because of the pandemic, I'm just curious as um, you'll then be eligible to, to go to the NBA even without playing a season at college. Is that something you'd look at or do you want to try to get one season in at college regardless of if it's this year or next year? Um, you know, I'll talk with my family about that. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tough call right now just because who knows what will happen. But, you know, I'll, I'll talk with my family. And see, excuse me, and see, you know, what the NBA is thinking, what the GMs are thinking, and everything, um, and just try to get as much feedback on what the best, you know, route for me would be, and I'll figure it out from there. Uh, I feel like that's a super long shot, you know. There's, there's no telling from right now, so I'm just trying to stay in the moment and, and keep working. But when we get there, I, I feel like I'll make the best decision for me.